Good day. The topic two will be on blood smears, and this is the second lecture series in on white blood cells. I'm Penny Nansamba from Makere University, Kovab. The objective of this lecture will be to outline the uses of thick and thin blood smears in diagnostics, to outline the procedures of making these blood smears, and thirdly, to outline the procedure of staining the blood smears. By way of introduction, blood smears are an essential aid in hematology, facilitating diagnostics, whereby technical staff can evaluate the white blood cells, both white and red, and the presence of protozoan parasites in the blood. So there are two major types of smears that we'll study, the thin blood smears and the thick blood smears. We we'll start with the thin blood smears. By definition, a thin blood smear is a monolayer of peripheral venous blood on a glass slide. <coughs> It can be used to identify different cell types. These may be white blood cells or red blood cells and platelets in a sample of peripheral venous blood. Any abnormalities in cell shape, inclusions like parasites, abnormal granules, and many more can be identified in the cells. It can be used for enumeration of white blood cells and here we're talking about the differential white blood cell counts. It can be also used to get a rough estimate of the total white blood cell counts or red blood cell counts or platelet counts, although there are more accurate methods of obtaining these counts. In this section, we are going to use the thin blood smear for differential counts. Preparation of the thin blood smears we use the wedge methods. The equipment we need will be one, glass slides to mount the smear on and also to use as a spreader to spread the drop of blood. Secondly, we need 90% alcohol to clean the glass slides. We need paper towels or cloth towels to dry the glass slides blood in anticoagulant, and lastly, we need a pipette or dropper or capillary tube which we can use to introduce a small drop of blood on the glass slide. So we start with a glass slide that's held between the thumb and the forefinger. A drop of blood is placed on the upper two-thirds of the slide. A second glass slide, which is a spreader, with smooth edges is held in the dominant hand and it rests at an angle in front of the drop of blood. Bring it backwards so that the edge touches the drop of blood which will spread across the slide. Now push the spread aside rapidly across the slide and air dry this thin smear immediately. The features of a thin blood smear include the following. It's tongue-shaped and it covers two-thirds of the slide. It has a head where the drop of blood was placed. It has a body, which is the major part of the, of the thin blood smear. This body is quite thick and we cannot use it for evaluation. It has a tail, which has got a feathered appearance. This is quite thin. It consists of a monolayer, and examination for differential counts is, cover, is carried out in this area. So it's always good to label the slide with a thin blood smear with the date, the time, any specific identity from the species it was taken, like a name, a number, age, and gender. This is placed towards the head of the slide. 
So the leukocytes are not distributed evenly across the thin blood smear. You're going to find that lymphocytes are more near the body, while the neutrophils and eosinophils are towards the edges, and the monocytes may be towards the tail. So this should be taken in account when a differential blood count is being conducted. So let's go to the first of our activities. Refer to the practical manual and find out what precautions are needed when making a thin blood smears. Look at what errors or common mistakes occur when you make thin blood smears and try and identify with them as you make practice making thin blood smears. Let's go to thick blood smears. A thick blood smear is a thick layer of blood that is lysed or dehemoglobinized and is used to detect commonly malaria parasites. The accurate confirmation of the morphology of the malaria parasites and thus the species cannot be done in a thick blood smear. It has to be done in a thin blood smears. It can also be used to look for other blood protozoan parasites like trypanosomes. So the preparation. A small drop of blood is placed in the center of the slide. It is spread with a corner of another slide to make it about four times its original area. The correct thickness, when it's satisfactory, should enable written print to be just visible when the thick blood film is placed over it. The thick blood smear is dried. It takes a longer time than the thin blood smear to dry. Staining the blood smears. Thin blood smears are fixed in 95% alcohol. This keeps the cells entire during the staining process. And it will help us visualize these cells in the evaluation. On the other hand, thick blood smears are not fixed because we want to cause the red blood cells to lyse. Romaniski stains are preferred and these give good nuclear and cytoplasmic detail. Examples of Romaniski stains include Gimsa, Jenna stain, Wright stain, Leishman stain, Field stain. It gives three color contrasts. Eosin dye will stain red, giving the red blood cells and eosinic filic granules red-orange colorations. The azure blue will stain blue, so the nuclei of the white blood cells and the cytoplasm of the lymphocytes will stain blue, while the basophilic granules, chromatin, neutrophil granules, platelets, and only ribosomes will stain violet or purple. The azure blue can combine with eosin to give a complex that can stain some organelles pink, varying from blue to pink, such as the cytoplasm. Now, this takes us to the second activity. What are the differences between the thick and the thin blood smears? Look for the differences during preparations, during the processing, and in the end uses of the smear. The following information was used to compile this presentation. Thank you.